on parole. My name is Dan Glazer. How you doing, Al? I'm doing good, man. Hey, Al, you know I'm going to Florida next week. Really? Yeah, but every time I go to the beach and wear my bathing suit, people always laugh. So I'm going to go, go to a nude beach so people won't laugh at my funny bathing suit. But that's dumb. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but that's dumb. Oh, hey, right. <laughs> okay. Okay, we have a great show. This is the big honor. The, the gentleman we have coming on is Dexter Tucker. He is a wonderful, wonderful comedian, actor, director, producer, and he's performed with such greats as his brother Chris Tucker, Patti LaBelle, and many more. But right now, let's quickly say hi, Vanessa. She has not been on the show for a while. Me. Say hi, Vanessa. What's new? Hi, Pr promote, your, promote your show for a minute. Okay. She I has will. a show. I will. I do. I do. And I'm six months into the audio prism show I now. I you say you're six months pregnant. Oh, God, no. Shh. <laughs> <laughs> We don't let the P word pass at this particular point. No, guys, I do the Audio Prism show every month. It's the second Monday of every month. And like I said, we're six episodes in. Um, my latest development with the show on the YouTube channel, on the Audio Prism show uh, YouTube channel, is you actually find shortened clips of the interviews and the different sections of the show. So you can have some Audio Prism on the go when you just have a few minutes to spare. You can go straight to your favorite interview or discover some new talent out there and different people in and around the industry, uh, including recently Al, who was a guest on my last show, uh, show, so you should watch episode six so you can uh, find all that project management and, and data analytics, because those things are actually really important to us as artists, even though we really don't like to think about them. Okay. Um, still doing karaoke at G's Midtown, okay. Sundays from 6 p.m. to 11, yeah. and Thursday nights from 9 p.m. until 1 a.m., yeah. going into wedding season, and um, have some new developments coming up, but I'm not we'll going to talk you know, This is only a 30-minute show. We'll talk about this. Already. See, I'm talking fast. G's Midtown <laughs> at near the corner of 10th and Piedmont. It is 290 10th Street. Let me get specific there. Very good. Very no. good. All right. No, thank okay. you very much, Thank Dan. you. Thank you. Welcome back. You. Welcome yeah, back. Okay. Put a little music on. Oh, Play yeah. the Atlanta Comedy <laughs> Theater video while we get, the, get you up here. The, the Atlanta Comedy Theater open mic thing. You want to go now? Yeah. American Hearts Radio Entertainment Network is proud to announce that Dan Glazer's Comics on Parole Open Mouth Night will be held on Wednesday night at Atlanta Comedy Theater in Atlanta, Georgia, where you could get glazed every week with Dan Glazer. Dan has a great success with his Comics on Parole Open Mouth Night. Now fate has brought Comics on Parole to a larger stage at the Atlanta Comedy Theater. Come see the Comics on Parole Open Mic at the Atlanta Comedy Theater. This is a show up, go up, for 45 minutes before the scheduled shows. 4650 Jimmy Carter Boulevard, number 114B. Go to www.atlcomedytheater.com. And don't forget to check out Comics on Parole web TV series every first and third Tuesday of every month at 9.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on www.americanheartsradio.com web TV. Okay, welcome back. We quickly wanted to bring Spacey Christina up here to talk about the Atlanta Comedy Theater for a minute. We recently were at Atlanta Comedy Theater class with Garrett Abdu, which was really wonderful. Great class. But we are going to have something on the 23rd of April. And tell us about that. The Oh, my gosh. This guy. He's so fantastic. No, 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 no. You're not. You misunderstand me. We're gonna. Ha are you gonna talk about the debate, the great debate? Is that I what was just gonna mention that real quick. Yeah, let's do it. That's what I want. Yes, the great debate. We're gonna have three presidential candidates debating together on stage at the Atlanta Comedy Theater. It's gonna be awesome. One of those guys actually has a regular show that we do at Hawks Grill in Roswell. That's uh, Jim Gossett. Jim Gossett, yeah. And that's awesome. Oh. You can find out more about that on his website, newsmakerline.com. And uh, Let, Let's show a little clip. This is a debate that Jim Gossett, J.A. E. Anderson, and um, Leslie Steele, who was a radio personality, and Josh Harris. Let's play the clip. Skip the, go right to that clip. So 
rich. The other day I wrote a check and the bank bounced. Look at that thing on your head, Donald. The only thing you should be president of is hair club for men. We're gonna hit ISIS hard. We're gonna hit them very, very hard. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna hit them. It's gonna be so hard, they're not gonna know what hit them. And I'm happy to report that 78% of today's youth are going back to school. Now granted, it's DUI school, but I'll have you know that they are graduating with 3.0s. What? <laughs> it's gonna be huge. Get your tickets at atlcomedytheater.com. So, so this is gonna be big. So you've gotta go there. To, 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 tell us more about what time is it at? It's at 5.30 and that's a Saturday afternoon before that, you know, the real more urban shows. And you want to announce one more thing? <laughs> oh yeah, Jim Gossett, which is the guy that's playing the Trump guy. He actually does some other comedy shows and his website, newsmakerline.com, that's at Hawks Grill in Roswell on May the seventh. And I have a few other comedians you can find out about on comedytickets.lol. I'm Spacey Christina and you can always find me on eBay. Amazon and Facebook. Now, briefly, you met a, the gentleman that's coming on today. You met him at the Atlanta Comedy Theater. Oh, God, this guy's so hot. <laughs> <laughs> and who is it? It's Dexter Tucker. And uh, you invited him. You told me about inviting him to come on the show. I did. And, and I did that because I respect him. He's a real gentleman guy. I, You know, sometimes you just go to these green rooms and people are just And like, he's a fan of your courses. Yes. He well, likes your courses. Yes. So let's briefly play a clip, the uh, Dexter Tucker intro. Okay. Don't, and I'm going to have you up in a second. Sorry, it was a uh, sunspot. That was, that's the ticket. It was a sunspot that put us out. So right now, we would like to welcome to the sta stage the esteemed Mr. Dexter Tucker. You can go get Dexter. Hey, hey, Dexter, how are you? How are you? It's good to, good to meet you. It's wonderful you came on this simple little show, which is live on YouTube and I think live on Facebook. Thank so, you for having me. Okay, now, so you you recently, you're a movie director. By the way, Dexter has performed, hosted for Patti LaBelle. He's hosted for his brother, Chris Tucker. Any other big names? You uh, some of my biggest shows probably to, um, to my recollection. Uh -huh. I've been doing comedy for 13 years. Right. Um, Biggest shows that stand out for me were opening up for um, Frank and Beverly Mays, oh, right. Vogue. Right. Um, opened up on the Tom Joyner cruise, being on that cruise. Uh, I got a chance to host the NAFTA African Oscars oh, in, wow. in, in L.A. Yeah, and it was a bunch of bunch of stars there, and I hosted the show oh, with wow. Amarosa. You heard Amarosa? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that was fun. So, yeah, I've done a lot of shows, a lot of shows. Very good. With my dream girl, Halle Berry, at the... Man, no. I wish she was. You know, she used to live here in Atlanta. Yeah, I never ran into her. Yeah. She ran into a tree once in a car on the news, but she was okay. <laughs> or yeah, that, a pole. That, that, remember that? That was, that was in Atlanta. No, I felt I very bad. Was in I remember that. Yeah. <laughs> I used to run into David Justice in the club all the time. I never <laughs> oh, yeah. had it. Very, yeah. very good. So, listen, this is a very multi-talented individual. More than a, just a comic. He's a producer of movies. He's an actor in movies. You're very multi-talented. Now, you started comedy 13 years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, and when did your brother start comedy? My brother always, um, he started comedy at the age of like 17. 17, yeah, okay, got in you. high school he started doing comedy. He, that's all he ever did. Yeah. I did other stuff. I thought I could go to college and be a lawyer, and I had all these other dreams. And 
he went on and did comedy, and after a while, I was like, damn. But were you in some of his jokes? You had to be the, uh, oh, the yeah. butt of some of his jokes. Oh, don't get it twisted. We wrote a lot of his <laughs> jokes. My my whole family, my brothers, my cousins. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we gave Chris all those jokes. But let me ask you, you all had a happy childhood. So many comics yeah. come from pain. No, nah, we had you a happy childhood. Back I can't even tell yeah. that lie. We had a happy childhood, great family, great dad, great mom. Yeah. Didn't your father at one time open a comedy club or have some kind of a club? We opened a comedy club. Uh, it was called Chris Tucker's Comedy Cafe. I actually was the manager, and my dad ran the kitchen. And I'm sorry, but I heard he passed away. Yeah, my dad very just sorry, recently passed sorry. away. Thank yeah. you. He just recently passed away right. in January. Yeah. Papa Tuck shot. Papa Tuck. Everybody loved Papa Tuck. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, we had the comedy club. My brother ran the bar. My sister was over the waitresses. It was a family thing. We had a ball. My boy rocked the sky here. Now he was over security. That really? guy right there was over security. How many so years ago was this? This is 20 years ago. Oh, yeah, no problem. It wasn't 20 years ago. <laughs> How long ago was it? It probably was like 10 years ago. 10 years ago. ago. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And um, and where was that club at? It was in Midtown, Rio Mall. Um, oh, Rio Mall. The Rio Mall. I remember. Was that was a mall. very strange mall. It, very strange. Yeah, yeah. And the only reason why we closed that club because they tore that mall down. That's right. I used to go yeah. there. There was a lettuce surprise you there. Yes, yeah, it, I remember was. it was. The bl red and blue mall. It was, very, it was metal. It was very odd. And it had the water in the middle. Yeah. yeah. It, it was neat. Um, okay. So how long that was that club there? The old it was only that club was only open on uh, like two years. It seemed like it was open for twenty years because everybody talked about it. But like yeah. three years, uh, everybody talks about it like it was open for longer. But it wasn't open that long. So you you were performing a lot at this club? No, you I didn't? was not doing comedy at all. I was really? not doing comedy at all. I you know I've done a lot of different things. You know I was a truck driver. I went to truck driving school at twenty. I had my own little trucking company. Right. Oh wow. I got into yeah. mortgages and, and a lot of stuff, uh, real estate, and uh, then I managed the club. Uh -huh. And it was only after all that that I decided to do comedy because a lot of my friends and people around me and other comedians kept telling me, you should do it, you should do it. And um, I never was, I, to be honest with you, I was never envious of uh, my brother's success, but I was envious of the fact that he got paid to travel. I was like, wow, that's pretty cool. Was it easy starting comedy? Because it's very oh, difficult. No. It's tough. <laughs> no. It is tough. It is not it for the weak easy. of heart. And especially since I knew people were going to say, oh, you just trying to do it because your brother doing it and this and that. And I knew what they were going to say. Right. Oh, he ain't funny as a brother. I knew that. And I knew I wasn't as funny as him. I respected the game from working in but the But I bet he club. was proud of you. Chris. I hope he was. He Did he I help you, you with your job? Nope. He <laughs> 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 but just being around the other comedians, other comedians helped me. Yeah, and I right. met them all. I met them all working the club, and I uh, got to be friends with them all. I paid them, so they respected me because I treated them fair. Right, right. So we were friends, and um, I respected because I saw some of the young comedians. I remember when when Bruce Bruce was like nobody knew who he was. You know, I remember when a lot of them came were coming up. Some Did you best. perform in L.A. as well? Yeah, I yeah. performed everywhere. This now. is a very friendly com comedy town. The, um, the the comics are supportive of each other in this town, I yeah, find. We try to be like And that. we're all pretty good friends, yeah. I, I think. But yeah. listen, we're going to get on to his movie thing because he really wants to promote that. But let's watch a brief uh, clip of one of his stand-ups. You got that? Uh, just play. Uh, the next one to play was uh, Dexter Tucker stand-up at Georgia State Capitol, which was a big honor. Do you see Video with her credit card. 
but we're supposed to be together. And getting being broke out you doing stuff, got me doing stuff I don't want to do, like, like flying cheap airlines. Anybody ever flew spirit? <laughs> don't do it to yourself, people. You think you're saving money, but you're really not. I paid full price. Don't play it yet. <laughs> okay, briefly, that wasn't the Capitol. Tell us about, the, so you performed at the Georgia State Capitol, too. What was that event? Yeah, you know, um, that was weird. A um, friend of mine, that was actually a tea party rally. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, and like, I'm a comedian, man. I, at that point, and that clip you just played, that was real old. I, I was up in Manchester, New York. Right. I didn't know where I was going. <laughs> yeah. I got up there. It was country. But I do a, I do a comedy show anywhere. I do a comedy show in the emergency And you room. got paid. Yeah, I got paid. I got paid. They flew me up there and everything. And that's the thing. You never know where you're going. You never yeah. know what you're walking into. It's exciting. And then you go by yourself. You don't have an entourage. You gotta trust these people. Trust that it's they a tough life. Yeah, yeah, man, but but it's fun. And you, you got you invited know. for the state capitol. Yeah, a tea party rally. And this was like when the tea party first started. And uh, I know this guy. And he was like, "Well, come on down, and I'm I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you probably three hundred dollars to tell some jokes." I was like, I'm "That's deaf. a lot of money to tell some yeah, jokes." Yeah, yeah, I'm deaf. I'm like fifteen minutes. Fifteen minutes. I give you three hundred. Okay, let's get it. Come on. Let's play a clip of that. I was scared of my mom and daddy. These new kids. Now, my little girl not scared of me. She asked me, could she go outside? The other day, I said, look, you can go outside as long as you stay in the yard. She looked me dead in my eyes. She said, okay, daddy. Then I watched her go outside, and she went straight to the street. I didn't know what to do, so I went and got one of them invisible electric fences and put it around the yard. I don't know if I should have done that, though. She won't go outside no more. <laughs> Catch hell getting her to go to school. My next old neighbor, he got little girls, right? I mean, he got little boys. I got little girls. And he trying to act like he harder than me because he got little boys and I got little girls. He come over talking to me. He said, these my son. These my little soldier. And he almost had me feeling bad because I know every man want a son. It's only natural. He almost had me feeling bad until one day I was in the backyard barbecuing and I heard a little scream on the side of the house. So I ran around now to see what was going on, and my little girl was pistol whipping his little boy with a water gun around him. <laughs> Ain't never been so proud of that little girl before in my life. Okay, okay, very good. We had to, okay, to, we wanted to see a little humor, and you're very good. <laughs> Thank very you, Very funny. Thank you, I appreciate and, it. And do you find, it's hard to sit down and write jokes. Do they have to kind of come to you? They do, because people try to give me jokes all the time, and... That's the worst thing. Yeah, you gotta it, it say this up there. You gotta to say you, this. But it's gotta be something that really <laughs> yeah. everything most of my jokes happen to me. Like he tried to give me a joke all the time and I, <laughs> I say I'm gonna use it, but I never do. I mean, I have intentions on it, but once I get on stage, because being on stage is a lonely place, you it know is. what I'm saying? And you gotta go with what you feel. And most of every joke I use is something that really happened to me. Or something somebody like one of my friends happened to them and they told me and I was like, that's the funniest thing I ever heard. I'm using that. But it it comes to you like a revelation. Yeah. And you yeah. write it down. You got to use it. Yeah. But you can you? I can't sit down now and write jokes. They have to come. Or can you sit down and write a joke? Well, what I do, I write down uh, a topic, and I write down if the joke is funny, I write down so I won't remember it. But I don't have to write down the whole joke. Right. I write down you know little pieces of it, and yeah. I know that the funny parts, the punchlines, and I don't have to sit there and write the whole joke. Okay. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Very good. Now let's talk about the other Dexter Tucker. The actor, Dexter Tucker. The producer, director, Hector Tucker. Because he's here to promote a very important movie called... Jimmy, Did You Get One? It's my latest film. I'm promoting two films, actually. This is my second film, Jimmy, Did You Get One, man. And uh, we worked really hard on this. Uh, my partner, Jerry May, is here. It was actually his brainchild. Um, he's a producer with me and a um, director with me, and we did it all together. Um... First, well, I guess we're going to go through Jimmy first, because I want to talk about the comedy club. Set it, okay, so set this up. Set this movie, explain it, and we'll show the clip. Okay, Jimmy, Did You Get One, our second feature film. What we did was, our first film was a comedy, and when we finished it, we were very proud of it. And I met Jerry right when we finished it, and Jerry, um, he um, edited the movie and everything, the comedy club movie, the first one. And so he told me about an idea he had about Jimmy, Did You Get One? This is Jerry Brainchild. And I was like, that's what we need, because I'm shopping the comedy club, and everywhere we go, they ask me what stars are in it, what stars are in it. But I use a bunch of up-and-coming comedians. Right. So I said, okay, we got something for them. We're going to come back and hit them with an action thriller that doesn't need stars, because, you know, most scary movies don't have stars. Well, they mostly get killed, yeah, too. Well, exactly, yeah. exactly. So we want to show them that we know what we're doing. This is our passion. This is what we want to do. So we hit them with Jimmy, Did You Get One? Check Let, this out. Let's see. Boy, you should be a talk show. 
I told you. I'm the one who's missing and you come in my house asking me questions like I got something to do with it. Where's your sister? You tell me within three counties is 8,000 registered sex offenders? Dan jumped a couple of times. I actually did jump. That looks scary. That looks scary. It is scary. And it's it's it's, it's a good storyline, it's a mystery. And um it, it tugs at the heartstrings. It's a good movie. And we ready to shoot part two. So So are there's no monsters, it's a mystery. Suspense, mystery, murder thingy. Well, what it is is um Jimmy has is was raised by his grandmother and she she got his head all messed up and uh for some reason she got she has him going out kidnapping uh young girls and bringing them back to the house and they holding them hostage in the, in the um basement and the story most of the plot is about uh the, the cops not knowing who's doing it in a, in this small town and then a family looking for their daughter and uh, and it just gets deep from okay. there okay now is it completely filmed now yeah. Okay. Yeah. So the next step is selling the film, correct? Yeah, we have a, we have a couple of different opportunities on the table. Um, right now, we we're talking with TV One, uh, but we're ready to shoot Jimmy Two, and we're trying to turn this into a franchise and also keep it going. This is what we want to do, and that's a, that's a, that's the best kept secret nobody ever knew that even when I started doing comedy, this is what I wanted to do. Eventually, it was to this shoot. This is really your movies. dream. Yeah, this is why comedy was my way to get into the business. So while you're selling your your partner is going to go around and you're going to sell these films uh, you go to the festivals to sell the film we go to you're going to be shooting part two yeah yeah we will see we've made a lot of different contacts as we've been going on and we've been learning everything on the way because it's a tight business man people won't oh, tell yeah, you tough. nothing they won't help and you. they didn't kill you off in the first one no okay Cause, but will they kill I'm you off sure. in the second one we can't know you can't know. say it. i don't know okay is there humor in this movie yeah there is okay yeah, is. not not a whole lot so when this gets released in uh, theaters, please contact me. You're welcome to go on, and let's promote the film again. We'll do. We'll do. Now, we'll do. you want to talk about another movie. Now, my first movie, the first movie that we shot with my partners, Derek Hanspike and Rick Stevenson, uh, it's called The Comedy Club Movie. Now, this I did this. This is my first movie, and I wanted to give all the comedians the opportunity to shine because right now, you know, at that time, we didn't have a whole lot of outlets like Comedy, uh, Comic View, and right. Deaf Comedy Jam. We didn't have that anymore. So the only comedian that were blowing up, like Cat Williams and um, and and uh, Kevin Hart. Yeah. Did you know Kevin? <laughs> I know him all. Yeah. The, the, they were blowing up because of movies. Yeah. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna shoot a movie and I'm gonna put all y'all in it. So they all came out and everybody had a good time making this great funny movie, original stuff. Like we were shooting it from scratch and it was like, it's like when Spike Lee shot his movies, they were different. Yeah, yeah. And so he started his own little trend, and that's what we tried to do. And I think it's hilarious. So I'm, we're still going to put it and, out. And the name of it again is? It's called Comedy Club the Movie. And they can find it on YouTube? Yes. Is it on the Comedy Club the Movie or the Comedy Club Movie? The Comedy Club. The comedy, it's under the Comedy Club Movie on YouTube. Okay. The comedy so club. when you come back on to promote uh, Jimmy, we'll, we'll show that clip okay. of the Comedy Club Movie. Okay. So. The next, so you real love right now, you're not giving up, you're still doing comedy, but now you're getting to produce a movie, and you're mm -hmm. in Hollywood now. You work on the set of The Vampire Diaries. Yeah, yes, yes. I work on the set of Vampire Diaries. I've uh, been there for the last six seasons, 
and we're in the seventh season. Right and now. do you learn a lot when you're working on these oh, sets? Definitely, man. And it was really, it's crazy how that happened because I had just finished shooting the comedy club movie and um, I wasn't even looking for a job. I needed one. <laughs> and that's that guy. He hooked me up and I'm working on the set every day and I see how they do it on a bigger scale than even the scale that we do it on uh -huh. and the scale that we need to get to one day. And I'm, I'm learning everything I need to know. It's like going to college every day and I'm getting paid. So. Now, uh, I briefly want, so you hosted this year for uh, your brother, Chris Tucker. Yeah, he, he's been on tour for the last, like, year and a half, and I've been doing little spot dates with him. But uh, the biggest shows I did were we did the Hot Rock uh, Casinos uh -huh. oh, wow. in Florida. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Now, are you nervous hosting for Chris Tucker, your brother? Are you... I'm not, you not, I'm not more nervous than any other time. Not, not the audience, him watching you perform... Will you do it well, or are you just used to it? It's no, it's nah, fine just, and no nah, big deal now. Nah, I'm just used to it now. I mean, I'm nervous before every show, but um, I, I even think the bigger crowds are easier because yes, once you hear right. that roar of the laughter, then you like, oh, they okay. are easier. They yeah, are easier. The small crowds, if they're and, not laughing, that's the problem. And I got to tell you, I was so happy to see him kind of make a comeback in the Silver Lining Playbook. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and you go to most of his movie sets. You didn't go mm -hmm. to that one. No, I didn't go to that one because I don't think he was there that long. Um, it wasn't a big role, but he yeah. stood out. Yeah, he was there. And I had, had started working on the sets then. I think he was only there for like a week or two. Have you worked on the sets of his movies? Yeah, I was in Money Talks. Oh, you, that was a big movie. Yeah, I was in Money Talks. Had what was your part? Uh, <laughs> the, when he went to the stadium and he was calling back to the guy with all the guns. Yes. And there was some guys that didn't answer the phone that was sitting on the couch with those girls. Yes. That was me. Did oh, you, could we see you? Yeah. Oh, hey, see, see, he's in all, see, he's been in some big feature, feature film called Lynch Mob, which was a horror film. Lynch Mob, 2009, yeah. or it said 2003, but is it 2003 or 2009? YouTube it. It's scary, too. You were in Big Fat Hip Hop Family, yeah. and you were in So Fresh and So Clean. So Fresh and So Clean. I was in Treasure in the Hood. Treasure the Hood, that yeah, too. That was a good move. Treasure See, unfortunately, we have been told not to download these big major films anymore or we will be suspended. I've shown, and they've called it, this is new. We can't do it anymore. We could do mm -hmm. your film, but the big major production, we have to put them on for 10 seconds. We have to be very careful. Oh, okay. But if you YouTube, Lynch Mob, Big Fat Hip Hop Family, these are movies he's been in. Black Man Can Swim, Treasure in the Hood. Do you know, they always joke about that, you know, uh, Jewish, I'm Jewish. Mm -hmm. Jews don't have to swim because we just part the oceans. <laughs> <laughs> but that's tough. Okay. Now, by the way, we have a special guest here to see you. Special guest, are you here? Hey, man. <laughs> What's up, brother? <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's my brother, man. What's Hold up? The you know what? I miss you, man. This fool right here looks just you like so Chris. Much. <laughs> yeah, I'm on hey, food before I've been. I was like, hey, man. I'm the one with the funny, but he got all the money, man. <laughs> he got 50, 11 jobs, man. Hey, where y'all find this guy, man? It's so good to see you, brother. <laughs> Don't act like that in front of the white man. <laughs> Boy, you good. <laughs> you good. Hey, let me hold $50. I got it. <laughs> What are you working on these days? Oh, man, whatever he working on. <laughs> he got all the money. <laughs> in fact, there was a movie. You just told me you were in the movie. I got the, what was it called? Money Talk. Money Talk. Yeah. But he does talk. No, but he, he does everything. Producer, writer, artist, man. When he told me about that movie, Jimmy Got a Hat, I thought it was a, a safe sex movie. He said, no, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's a serious piece. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Grab well, a seat. Sit in the middle here. Hey, hey. Here. Just hey, here. Look like Chris. You <laughs> <laughs> look like him for real. You got the boys down back. Yeah, man, you still look good, man. I see you got yeah. the <laughs> <laughs> you did some extra work. What? Oh yeah. <laughs> you know, I heard when you were children, you were sitting by the fire, mm -hmm. and your dad came in and said, "Which one wants to be Chris Tucker?" And you raised your hand first. He didn't get a chance, and you became Chris Tucker. Well, it is what it is, Dad. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Very good. The white folks always think they know what they're talking about, don't they? <laughs> okay, well, look, very man. good. Huh? I gotta go, man. Okay, very good. Very good. I love you, man. Hug him, you too, brother. Thank you, bro. Hug him. Very good. That was A.K. Chris Tucker, Danny Simmons. <laughs> very good. Thank you so much, Danny. You love you, man. Yeah, I've had that before, but that was fun. Yeah, like this, I was like... <laughs> <laughs>
You actually thought it was in there first. Yeah, he looked like it when he came in. Got a little shorter though. I'm sitting down. Hey, Danny, very good, Danny. Very good. Danny. Very good. Hey, you, we gonna do a Chris Tucker movie without Chris Tucker. He could be a little better. Hey, you could. You do a spoof. You could put him in there. Yeah. That you need. He you need to give his name and number. Give it a. That would be you know like the scary movies. You could put yeah, him in there. Yeah. That, oh, you know what? Wow. Okay. He pops out of everywhere. That he. Just gave me. Leave idea. him your phone number, Danny. <laughs> Oh, you're staying now. You said, yeah, now you're staying. Okay. I'm Very good. Now. <laughs> there he goes back to his real boy. Um, so anyway, so the next step is what? What's your uh, next phase? The, uh, the movies that are in Hollywood right now, both of them. And um, we got somebody shopping them for us. And we're ready to shoot the second one. They suggest to us to hold on a second. Uh, but we're ready to go. Me and my partner, Jerry May, this is what we want to do. How long did it take you to film this movie? Uh, you know, when you're shooting um, out your own pocket, it takes a little longer. It took us all boy, probably about nine months. But the next movies that we, we're going to be shooting going to all have tight budgets, and it won't take us no longer than three to four months at the most. Okay. Yeah. And um, now, the thing is, is that what makes a great picture, you put a lot of film in, but the thing that makes the picture great is the editing. The editing. And yeah, who is yeah, doing you, the editing? You need a great story. Yeah. And Jerry May does the editing, um, but um, I got a good friend, um, Greg Gritz Carter, uh, who's helping us now uh -huh. take it to another level because we took it as far as we could, uh -huh. and he's he has a little bit more experience than us, and he's helping us take it to another level. But we're learning every day. We're so eager. That's all we want to do. Because this is not work to us, and this is our dream, just to just to make movies. Now, once you become a big movie director, you're making the big bucks. This is a test of your love of comedy. Will you continue comedy? I think so. Okay, because that, so. the one, it, it's a very difficult thing. But the one that the ones that really love it are the ones that become big yeah. stars, but like Robin Williams, for, and but continue the Richard yeah. Pryor, continue the comedy. I think so, man. Because this is one of the things. It's like I continue to play golf. You know, and I can't hardly play. Uh, Comedy is challenging, just like that. You know, and it's it's your last show is, is that's what you're worth right now. Because if you bomb your last show, you can't wait to get back oh, yeah. and do it again. Well, you know, Al the other day said yeah, we don't really bomb anymore. Uh, I am bombing a long time. I don't know about you. <laughs> I ain't bombing a long time. I mean, when I call bombing, I'm talking about getting booed like we did when we first started. Boy. I bombed so much. The, I bombed so much. The FBI put me on a terrorist watch list. Hey, it's the shirt, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> What's up with the talk, shirt? Talk with my tailor. What does it say? Hawaiian tropic. Hawaiian tropic. Yeah. That's right. You know, Al the other day said said to Dan to me, Dan, you should stop telling jokes and take up golf, because when people see your golf swing, you'll get more laughs. Do you go? Does Chris talk? Does, does Chris uh, yeah, golf? Chris golf. Uh, my brother Nars. We all golf. We ought to go out there and hack it around. A little Who's bit. the better golfer? Yesterday. We Me? All, we, all <laughs> we all we all about the same horribleness. Yeah. Chris actually took some lessons with, with Lee Elder, so he's probably Oh, wow. Yeah, he's wow. probably the best. It, it, and I, it, this is about you. The, the show is about you. But I just want is Chris working on uh, anything else upcoming? I don't know. You know what? Yeah, I know he just did a movie, but I don't even know the name of it. Um, he called me like, yo, I'm in L.A. finishing, doing some reshoots for the movie that we shot in Atlanta. He did a, just did a movie, so it should yeah. be coming out soon. Uh, it's wonderful. He's had to come back. Now. Will you do we one favor? You came to the Atlanta Comedy Theater mm -hmm. the other day. Chris loves open mics. Mm -hmm. And when you get a joke, can you come and test your jokes on our open mic? Yeah. I mean, I, man, I got a phone full of jokes that, um, you know, just working on the sets was keeping me busy. But now I got a few weeks off, so I'm going to come by. So I'm com it's now at 8.45, so uh, 9.45. So 9 come by I'm coming tomorrow. Oh, good, yeah. I'm coming tomorrow. So that would be wonderful to have you come. One time, uh, Chris came into the punchline, and he stayed up there about an hour to do the open mic. And all he did, we asked him questions. He was funny. He was yeah. hilarious. Oh, yeah. He's funny. Is, is, was his Can't voice? All, was your voice always like that, Chris? What is that mean? his natural voice? <laughs> what do you mean, man? <laughs> 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 you understand the words that are coming out of my mouth? <laughs> 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 oh, <you. laughs> Very good. Very good. Very good. Now, okay. As your movies do get, you have produced many movies. Uh, but this is one of your biggest you've produced, correct? Yeah. And you, do you have backers for this movie? 
No. This this movie we did ourselves. Well, uh, my man Greg Gris Carter is helping us now. What he's doing for us now would have cost me a lot of money. So he's going to um, come on as an investor. But, yeah. It was it was me and Jerry. So as this movie hits it, you'll be able to get. I don't know if you want major stars, but you yeah. can get more. And oh more yeah, I need major. I need. I'm gonna need major stars because I got different kind of scripts. I have some action stuff. I have more comedies. I'm gonna need major stars. You just can't get around it. You have to make major stars. But at the same time, I'm trying to make myself a major star. Did you try to get? Some Did you miss that? I yeah. starred in both movies. You That's right. That. He you starred in that. most movies and some other movies too, like uh, like um, uh, Treasure Hood, Treasure Hood, Lynch Mob, Lynch and Mom. Big Fat Hip Hop Family, which yeah. you can all see on YouTube. Uh, where are you performing? Do you have anything scheduled to perform at? What do I have next? Um, <clears throat> I'd probably be up there performing for a week up at Gary's Club at the Atlanta, okay. at the Atlanta um, Comedy Theater. And I really don't know. I have, my assistant takes care of all that. Uh, he needs to have you headline or something. At the um, at the club, I, yeah, I just I I headline, I feature, it don't matter to me. Um, it's work, <laughs> but you can check me out. Uh, go on my YouTube. Uh, I mean, my I'm talking about YouTube, Facebook, my website DexterTucker.com, Facebook at Dexter Tucker, uh, Instagram. I put all my dates on there. Okay, uh, Dexter Tucker underscore one on Instagram. And you know, in the movie, first of all, you look very young. You, you could be even with 25. Gray, yeah, right you're there. proud of that gray on your head. Let's been talking about he, the whole show. He said, hey, you see the gray on my hair? Yeah, because I'm kind of nervous about that. No, know. but you could play someone 20 years younger or 20 years older. So you could play a broad range good of characters. Yeah. So please, will you keep us in touch with what's happening with your movie? I will do, man. And I appreciate you. Thank you me. very much. And every uh, Chris, come up here. Everyone come up here. We'll say goodbye to the crowd. <laughs> <laughs> you better stop having that man, Chris. Didn't you say that they was already trying to sue you? <laughs> sue you? Now you got this fake Chris in here. <laughs> <laughs> say goodbye to everyone, Chris. Say goodbye to everyone. everyone. <laughs> Thank you for tuning in to Comics on Parole. Tune in in two weeks where we don't know who will be on, but they will be here. And remember, wherever you go, there you are. Thank you. And you know this. <laughs> man. Man. <laughs>